Um, I just have a few follow-up questions sure, yet, sure. and I can give you a quick update on the article that I'm working on. Right. I'll record too. I know that we'll yeah, have the transcript ready, right. so that's that's just uh-huh. such a such a big help, such a great resource, I think, for okay. journalists. Cool. Um, so the article, I think, when I first got back in touch with Zach, the original plan was that it was going to come out at the end of this month. That's right. It could be probably early to mid-April. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have the photos. We're going through edits right now. So I just had a few follow-up questions. Sure. But um, the original thesis that I set out with um, when we spoke last summer was that I really wanted to take a historical perspective Mm -hmm. and I wanted to look at the development of democracy and and start use that as the starting point to Mm -hmm. figure out where this trust comes from. And so far, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where the piece is. I think I was able to go into that history and bring awesome. some bits to the surface, uh-huh. which I think is new because again, uh-huh. Taiwan, even when we talked last, yeah. Taiwan was already in the news a lot and it's been in, you know, you've been covered that, mm-hmm. that great Wired profile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've seen the story of Taiwan featured mm-hmm. um, a lot since. Um, there, there actually, uh, there's one idea that I wanted to flesh out with you sure. a little bit more, which is, you know, in a lot of the lectures, a lot of the interviews and talks that you've given, you describe very effectively um, these tools of Taiwan's digital democracy. Mm-hmm. And there's a link there between these digital democracy tools and I think the Sunflower Movement, mm-hmm. right? Where yeah. Where, where that people was really became important. aware of these tools for the first time. Yeah. Like live streaming. Before the Sunflower Movement, not many people in Taiwan had an experience in telepresence, okay. uh, let alone a deliberative uh, conversation across telepresence. Yeah. So live streaming is one example. And, and I just wonder if since 2014 to when you started mm-hmm. as digital minister to today, if there are other things. I was kind links. of intern for a couple of years before. Uh, and I'm an this intern, office. sure. Right. <laughs> Reverse mentor is the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, were there other uh-huh. programs or initiatives or tools that you would point to as linkages? Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, the e-petition platform uh, is mm. a, a really good linkage because it's literally set up in response um, to the Sunflower Movement, the National Forum on Economic um, Development and Economic and Trade Development uh, had a consensus item that says uh, to kind of prevent, well, it didn't say prevent, (coughs) so that (coughs) people can use the network, uh, the internet, to uh, highlight the issues that they find uh, wrong or needs change Mm -hmm. in the administration. Um, The country needs to set up a public infrastructure online for such e-petitions, so that uh, the idea is that it's a viable alternative to each and every controversial issue resulting in the Occupy of the parliament. So there's an outside game, right? But because of this um, consensus on national forum, the National Development Council, which was brand new, right? It was just set up uh, as a institution just around that time, uh, set up this join the GOV, the TW platform uh, around the end of 2014. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that carried over directly from 2014 um, to today. And today, more than one quarter of citizens and initiatives uh, on that platform are from people who are not even 18 years old. <coughs> so, so you really uh, expanded the idea of citizenship yeah. because uh, we, we call it Gongming, like a voting citizen, yeah. uh, which is different from a Guoming, which is someone with the nationality of Taiwan. <laughs> but a joint platform mm-hmm. really expanded so that people under 18, people who are uh, new immigrants, people who um, carry a gold card, for mm-hmm. example, who, who do not have the voting rights, nevertheless can participate in national level agenda setting, much like Sunflower Movement, minus the physical occupy. So the petition. Mm-hmm. takes a more expansive view of this constituency. Mm-hmm. So that's the mm-hmm. Guomi versus yeah, just right. the Guomi, which yeah. is with but, or, or rather everyone is Guomi now. Right? Yeah, okay. And anyone with the internet connection. But but we have universal broadband, so that's literally everyone. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um so I so I yeah, that is a really good example from the from the government side, right? Like here's mm-hmm. this new tool um mm-hmm. that we that our goal is to be more inclusive with? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's purely GovTech, okay. because in the joint platform, there is an area um, 
that shows all the one year or longer mid to long term projects, uh, 2000 or so of them, uh, of all the ministries, including the budget, the visualization, a bubble graph uh, of the kind of expenditure um, and uh, quarterly or monthly reports uh, and with this public commentary board. And that's a carbon copy of the uh, budget that G0V.TW, the inaugural Gov0 project of budget visualization, mm -hmm. uh, right? Uh, so the point is that in 2012, uh, Gov0 kind of forked the um, national budgeting office yeah, I, I uh, into that, that visualization. Right. But uh, <clears throat> in 2016, um, that project is no longer maintained than uh, purely by the social sector. Of course, the social sector still maintains uh, their imagination, uh, but what worked uh, during 2012 to 2016, starting mm -hmm. 2016, is part of public infrastructure. We also maintain a copy of that with the responses from all the career public service uh, as part of joint GOVTW. So okay. it's a like a fork that's been merged back to gov.tw. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you mentioned 2000, <coughs> you, you said the number 2000, was that 2000 budget items or? Uh -huh. Yeah, 2000 uh, long term, mid to long term projects. Okay, um, in the co it, within the budget? Yeah, within the national budget. Okay. So basically um, all the ministries that are listed here um, contribute whatever they file to the National Development Council mm. uh, also here, so around 2000. Oh yeah, yeah, almost, yeah. yeah. And you can see for example, how the budget is being spent, okay. uh, the uh, kind of individual budgets. Let me just randomly click one. This is about oh the GIS system of Ministry of Interior. Okay, that's a fun one. Um, maybe we can uh, highlight based on how many people care about it. Uh, long-term healthcare, everybody cares about this. Um, and so this is a really long-term project because it's a 10-year project. We're now in year three of 10, yeah. uh, and it shows quarterly uh, what the budget has been spent upon, the highlights oh, of cool. that particular quarter, uh, people's public commentary, and then the real-time response uh, from the competent authority um, in response to the people's comments and so on. Uh, and so all this uh, was kind of initially imagined by Gov Zero, but it's now a permanent part of the yeah, GM platform. That's completely open. Yeah. When you said let's pick one that people actually care about, was mm -hmm. that going off comments? Yeah, uh, I'm just sorting based on the number of comments. Oh interesting. Yeah. So so for that one, what mm -hmm. what was the number of comments? There's uh forty comments, okay, I think. Uh, and then the quarterly response, for example, pertains to, uh, for example, in running long-term healthcare partnership organizations, sometimes they uh, first uh, do the expense and the reimbursement from the state subsidy uh, takes yeah. a long while uh, to, to wire in because of the paperwork uh, required. It's yeah. not streamlined and so on. And so in 2018, when someone uh, just upvoted this uh, feedback, this comment, uh, they uh, basically just said, okay, let, let's simplify this. So instead of waiting for 10 years or a, uh, for a fiscal year in order to change it, this allows for this real-time response and the competent authority public servant doesn't have to you know, answer 40 phone calls each not knowing uh, someone else has already made the same um, call, right? So yeah. they can just do a public response once and rely on the search engine optimization uh, to show their response to everybody involved. Okay. Um, earlier, you, you also mentioned the stat that a quarter of the uh, mm -hmm. is it e petitions? Yeah, are the e petition side. So this is the budget visualization right, side. Right. Right. Uh, but the joint platform also have a regulatory announcement side. Yeah. Like regulation.gov. All right. And also a e petition side. Yeah. So it's different sections, and more than one quarter uh, is from people in basic education. That is to say, uh, younger than eighteen. Right. So they submitted these proposals. That's right. How, ballpark? How many proposals are on uh -huh. the platform? Right, so uh, at and the I'll moment, these, yeah. uh, I don't need ballpark, I can just read it, I guess. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah. um, so um, at the moment, um, currently there is um, 265 um, under uh, the uh, counter signature process. Okay. Um, and um, currently there's 200 and 38 that reached the 5,000 signature uh, threshold. Okay. Um, right. Uh, and I think, oh, yeah, yeah a, a lot of these 
are actually quite uh, impactful. For example, someone uh, petitioned successfully to ban the plastic straws in takeout drinks, like the bubble tea. Yeah. Uh, and when we meet at someone, well, she's just 16 years old, and mm -hmm. we're like, "Why are you petitioning this?" And she's like, "It's my civics class assignment." Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of plastic saved every time I walk mm -hmm. by a bubble tea shop. It's that's just right. that's where the crowd is. Exactly. Um, so that's that's a really good, good example of something that. I, I'd like to hear your perspective more on, which is since Sunflower and since there were these concerted efforts to, mm -hmm. to create a digital democracy from these positions of power, um, are there other expressions of engagement that you've seen from the people, from the public? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the presidential hackathon is also a really good example mm -hmm. uh, because the sustainable goals is now the common vocabulary across all sectors uh, in order to um, you know not sacrificing future generations kind of the theme of that book right? yeah, yeah. Uh, and so um, for example in the past year's presidential hackathon the five uh, winning teams all relate to climate change in some way uh, and there's one for example uh, that builds a data collaborative by people people who uh, check um, the barcode in say a grocery store when you scan the barcode usually it shows the price right of a box of cookies or something uh, but if you use the app um, it, it's called Tomin Zuji if you use the their app to scan the same barcode mm. it shows not the price but rather the environmental value uh, like uh, how much pollution for example this uh, box wow. of cookie cost <laughs> right? how much um, like arable land uh, did it destroy <laughs> so, so the, the uh, like uh, in expensiveness uh, may actually be just uh, externalizing uh, right. those costs uh, to the environment and so on. But people were, um, of course, not aware of that because it's not uh, mandated in food ingredients. <laughs> but by uh, cross-referencing the ministries of uh, economic affairs, of the Environmental Protection Authority, the Council of Agriculture and so on, a entirely um, like donation-based uh, crowdsourcing uh, and uh, crowdfunding uh, civic sector uh, built the, this tool. Uh, and they won the presidential hackathon, one of the five winning teams. So they got this presidential mandate for the Ministry of Economic Affairs to publish like the longitude and latitude of all the kind of um, penalties to the um, industrial plants on the arable lands and so on. So this is just one example. But this wow. is, I think, the kind of data collaborative that we see that starts from the social sector and then gets buy-in from the public sector. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. That's something that I'd love to check out mm -hmm. just individually. Um, sure. Okay, so moving on to a more specific question, um, I've I've read some past news reports of uh, where you talked about um, just around uh, certain data privacy concerns oh, yeah. that have come yes. from these, um, you know, uh, greater enforcement, uh, greater measures during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, there was mention of a data privacy council That's right. and when I talked to Zach a few weeks ago mm -hmm. he said that it was still very much in the preliminary stages mm -hmm. so he said that right now you know so I guess this was about a month ago um, mm -hmm. it was at the yeah. stage where a special task force had been right created. now it's part of the uh, personal data protection office within the National Development Council right right uh, and the NDC uh, does a pretty good job uh, in making sure that the uh, interpretations of the mm -hmm. Personal Data Protection Act um, is consistent <coughs> across all the ministries. Uh, but the NDC is also in charge of national data development uh, in the more commercial sense or economic sense, right? Um, and so there's calls from the civil society uh, for more independence in that right, office right. Uh, so that the NDC, for example, would not uh, directly appoint the head of that office so you could, uh, for example, get GDPR adequacy. That's right. right. And is that, that, is yeah. that still on the table? Uh, that... I think the NDC, as part of their uh, Open Government National Action Plan uh, commitment, uh -huh. uh, is committed to, uh, within the term of the President size term, uh, second okay. term, uh, okay. to, to resolve the situation and get a GDPR adequacy. So okay. if you check the National Action Plan, it's actually within the, I think, 18 or 19 commitments. Mm -hmm. I think the or something is that commitment okay so it's it's kind of a longer multi-year it's a multi-year project yeah. uh, mainly because uh, the NDC itself uh, is now uh, also working on uh, a a uh, transfer of some core functions uh, to the to be set up digital ministry 
Uh, and so, for example, uh, the open data uh, mm -hmm. portal, data GOVTW, mm -hmm. uh, or actually join the GOV.TW, uh, these may actually uh, be one of the uh, items that gets transferred from NDC uh, to, to the MODA, to the Ministry of Digital Affairs, yeah. uh, when the MODA is, of course, uh, passed by the legislature into existence. Okay. Uh, and so this is, by necessity, a multi-year effort because the MODA doesn't exist yet. Okay. Uh, Okay, thanks for that update. Um, the last question that I have uh, for this story is, you know, there's the broader implication for all of this, right, which is that there is a lot of focus, COVID has caused a lot of focus on different governance models. Mm -hmm. And I think the context in which my story appears is that, unfortunately, a lot of the broader discussion has slipped into this binary between mm -hmm. the US and China. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and this the argument that my story tries to make, and I think mm -hmm. really what seems to have been one of your missions in the past year has been exactly well, I'm like, publicly hey, no binary, yes, yeah, yes. yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. let's you know down with the binary That's basically, right. um, and and look at us, look at what we've been doing mm -hmm. here, um, and so to a certain extent, it's been codified as the Taiwan model, oh, and, and you know the hashtag Taiwan mm -hmm. can help, and That's right. um, I I wonder. How much traction you've seen that? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I there's been a lot of interest, right, from around the world. I mm -hmm. think, but Definitely. beyond beyond kind of these speaking engagements and and these conversations mm -hmm. that you're having with world health experts, global leaders, mm -hmm. have you seen anywhere in the world? Um, yeah, I think Japan has adopted a lot of our ideas. Okay. Um, I personally, along with people in Gulf Zero, contributed to the Tokyo Metropolitan uh, Area's Stop COVID uh, dashboard. Uh, and that's a code for Japan, a dear equivalent of Gem Zero uh, project. And then the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan government just gave them a domain name. Uh, that's uh, the official gov uh, government's domain. So mm. just like join GOVTW, join G0VTW mm. relationship. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the uh, person, uh, Harusuki san the person uh, in charge of code for Japan and that work, um, actually, I, I think, gets recruited uh, into this um, cabinet office uh, in preparation. Uh, as the deputy um, CIO, I think, in preparation for the upcoming digital ministry. Uh, in their case, it's digital agency. And their digital agency also, like our MODA draft, they also uh, include this uh, clause that says uh, they can actually recruit up to 100 people uh, from the civil society and the civic tech into uh, the national level government uh, mm. in order to build a better people-public-private partnership uh, wow. and so on. So, so all this, I think, has been uh, accelerated because of the ongoing conversation between the um, like top level uh, civic hackers and government officials, uh, like special advisor to the cabinet and so on, uh, and with, well, yours truly, but also uh, Gap Zero and other civic tech people here. So at least in Japan, there's a tangible change. Okay. Yeah. Um, have there been any other, and, and it doesn't have to, you know, in Japan, that parallel is actually very mm -hmm. striking, but I wonder if in your interactions with any other stakeholders mm -hmm. from other parts of the world, just interactions that may have stood out to you that you feel like are mm -hmm. especially promising. Yeah, uh, I talked with uh, a few MPs and also uh, social innovators in Canada, and it looks like they are introducing a public consultation around the infrastructure bill uh, and about kind of redefining the term infrastructure, much as what we did in 2016, where we classified, um, for example, the Ministry of Coaches, um, like virtual photogrammetry, videogrammetry of historical buildings and heritage sites, the mm -hmm. digital double uh, of those cultural spaces, uh, mm -hmm. like the, the online version of a national museum or a national park as infrastructure bill. Uh, and that was uh, very difficult back then because the National Budgeting Office did, didn't recognize anything that's intangible uh, as infrastructure, oh, right? Infrastructure is, is something concrete like yeah. literally made out of concrete yeah, 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 <laughs> and something yeah. that's made out of bits uh, right. didn't qualify as infrastructure but yeah. uh, thanks to uh, the uh, Premier Lin Chen at the time and Minister Zheng Li Jun and well yours truly uh, we, yeah. we managed to classify the digital part in the infrastructure bill even on intangible things as infrastructure classifying it as digital public infrastructure and, and now it seems like this idea has been um, maybe because we shared the story about the PTT uh, 
about how Dr. Li Wenliang's message traveled to the PTT, yeah. but because the PTT is uh, subsidized entirely by the National Taiwan University, which is a state-run university, so it doesn't have to answer to, say, uh, advertisers or shareholders or anything like that. So uh, the, the signal cuts through the noise, and that's what enabled Dr. Li's message to reach the CECC oh, and then um, enabled us to start just 24 hours afterwards health inspections coming from Wuhan to Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, um, Dr. Li's message didn't reach the people in Wuhan uh, because of their harmonization uh, issues. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it probably gets um, copied in other social media too, but then it's lost in the noise and didn't uh, translate into the kind of crowdsourcing triaging that mm -hmm. takes place in a public infrastructure digitally. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so this idea, I think, has also um, caught on, and Canada in particular, I think, uh, is considering this kind of infrastructure, but in the digital realm. Okay, so that's, that's, the, ins that's the inspiration that they've taken, because you, you also said that they're moving towards a public consultation. That's is right. There, you know, is, is that another facet of... Yeah, they, they actually, the Canadian uh, federal government contributed the uh, automated translation uh, part of POLIS. Uh, which we, we use now as an infrastructure, right? POLIS in Taiwan mm -hmm. is now polis.gov.tw, which means it's a kind of permanent part of the state, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, considering it's just a random open source project, it's saying a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, um, but when we run the POLIS conversations, um, if you uh, are of a different language setting than the person who posed the statement, mm -hmm. you can click uh, automated translation and see a translation. And that function is contributed by the Canadian government because uh, they have to be bilingual, like French English, uh, in fed, fed, uh, federal level consultations. Yeah. So there's also a lot of like code level collaborations. And speaking of which, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I personally translated the disinformation uh, campaign website, uh, this info that say that fr. There's a digital ambassadorship of the French uh, government, uh, and uh, it <coughs> what way it does <coughs> is that it, it shows. For example, the uh, kind of uh, statement of privacy, of usage, uh, and uh, of the major social media platforms, and making sure that, uh, for example, the identification uh, of the fake or imposter news sites, automated profiles, um, fake online posts, and so on, are highlighted, and people learn about the, the media competence uh, about it. And so there's a lot of tools um, and a lot of um, like open terms archive uh, that shows the terms of use uh, and how it evolves uh, across the time uh, in the major social media uh, platforms and bot detection and things mm. like that. And and you, you can see a, a Zhengti Zhongwen here, right? And and if you click that, you get into the, the Zhengti Zhongwen site yeah. uh, of it. Uh, and then uh, it translates in power to Zhengfu, which is a signature translation. I don't think anybody else <laughs> translated it this way. Uh, but, but this is uh, entirely me acting as a GitHub contributor sending oh, a pull wow. request uh, yeah. and the digital ambassador's team, um, Harry Medias team, just click uh, merge and then it's merged. So so that's yeah. um, that's very much like how I contributed with the Gov Zero folks, the translation of the Stop, Stop COVID Tokyo Metropolitan Dashboard. We did that as civic hackers, not as a minister. But then it gets noticed uh, by the city councillor and then by the mayor of Tokyo. So it looks like a diplomatic collaboration, but it's actually civic tech. Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. Is that a relatively new thing, these digital ambassadorships? Yeah, I think it's a relatively new thing. And I think it's, it's a great idea because uh, when we are talking to, for example, these uh, multinational uh, platforms, mm -hmm. it does feel like they are co governance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember you mentioning in a past interview that you you also did some translation work for the writings of Manuel Castells. Yeah, that's right. And um, do you do you do you see some of those principles um, as relevant to mm -hmm. this exercise during COVID? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the key insights of Manuel Castells in communication power mm -hmm. uh, is that power is not just about this kind of relative position within a hierarchy, uh, within a network. Uh, it's also the power to make new networks, to join existing networks, and make sure that people who are connected through these uh, self-programmed networks can translate the insights from one network, say, from the scientists and epidemiologists, uh, through the network of, say, comedians, uh, and turn them into uh, more useful messages, memes, uh, that can improve the public life and people would uh, voluntarily share uh, and take the remixing to their own hands instead of waiting for the government to do kind of top-down uh, fines if you're not uh, wearing a mask or something, instead a cute dog that says, uh, you know, wear a mask to protect yourself against your own unwashed hands that travels much faster and enable the creativity of the people to contribute to something like truly pro-social, which is appealing to the self-interest of not shout out shi shou shou, right? So yeah. instead of saying that um, very sternly, uh, respect your elderly or respect the uh, frontline medical workers, which doesn't quite spread, uh, right. that, that those messages don't go viral. But these uh, messages that appeal to rational self-interest, um, like protecting your own face against your hands, that's very intuitive uh, and people would then remix it in various different messages toward their own communities and networks yeah. and therefore uh, enjoy this um, programming power together to connect the previously kind of distant uh, communities like professional epidemiologists right, right uh, with their local community. I, I'm trying to connect that maybe I'm forcing this connection and, mm -hmm. and that's okay too um, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, you can talk me down from it, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to connect what you just said and, and especially that as a counterexample to a, a very top down structure, like what mm -hmm. you might have in China. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and like, how, how is it exactly that power gets distributed in these two different models? Right. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed like that's also what we're mm -hmm. talking about here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, when we talk about the uh, power to make new networks, mm -hmm. implicit in that is the freedom of assembly, right? The freedom to associate freely yes, to form yes. new networks. Yes. Uh, and the harmonization uh, impulses uh, in the PRC, basically each time a harmonization happens, it decimates the agency of mm -hmm. uh, each individual actor mm -hmm. uh, so that they couldn't form new uh, connections between right. their groups and other groups and other communities, right. like literally cutting it down by 10%, right? So uh, eh, that's what decimating means. So uh, anytime that uh, there's a takedown, uh, a censorship, uh, something like that, uh, one less possibility um, is uh, yeah, in front of the table of the possible solutions. And yeah, well, when yeah. the state keep doing that, uh, then maybe the, the top level of the state didn't even know what's really happening in Wuhan wow. because yeah. there's no uh, channels or networks or, or the you know the the grapevines <laughs> that could uh, reveal what's actually happening. There really is literally no way for uh, Dr. Li Wenliang to reach to the uh, top of the PRC leadership. But everybody in Taiwan already saw it on the PTT, so, so yeah. it's very different messaging models. Wow. Right. Right. Okay. I really appreciate you spelling it out for me uh -huh. because it made a lot more sense to me sure. that time around. Um, that's all I have for you. Uh, awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm just curious what what's what's what are some of your main goals for this year? Mm -hmm. Priorities. Yeah, the office. National Action Plan on Open Government, which mm -hmm. was just ratified, mm -hmm. uh, I think is very exciting, especially uh, around uh, empowering people who are not 18 years old. So, so we are looking to even more improve the reverse mentorship institution that we have, the mm -hmm. um, National Youth Advisory Council, yeah. uh, and to extend it uh, to, for example, the municipal level, the local level, uh, and making sure that the youth advisors can actually start their own uh, like collaboration meetings uh, with across the sectors. So they will get even more agency uh, as um, the future generations that lead the way, <laughs> and, and we just uh, empower them. So that really uh, is quite exciting. And of course, um, the, there's a upcoming constitution change. 
uh, that uh, aims to give the voting power to people uh, of 18 years old, uh, and a legal change to give the full like civil code uh, uh, adult uh, status to 18 year old, I think is uh, will take effect around a couple years uh, from now. So hopefully by that time, not only is 18 years old like fully an adult, but also people who are not 18 years old can also get a taste of what it feels like to participate yeah. actively in the democracy instead of uh, being told uh, wait until you're an adult. Cool. Yeah. That's. I mean, I think they already have many more of those channels than they would, for example, in the US, uh -huh. but mm -hmm. that's really cool. Definitely. Um, do you feel like, like, a bigger proportion of your day-to-day -day or, or some of these projects you're involved in has to do with, you know, I think you've been such an effective spokesperson for what's happening mm -hmm. here in Taiwan mm -hmm. to the rest of the world. Yeah. Do you, has that factored into mm -hmm. a shifting role for you? Like Taiwan model as in fashion model? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sort of. Uh, you're fashioning, yeah, you know, a lot of yeah. these new instruments and tools yeah. and ideas, really. Yeah. Uh, my day-to-day, my -day, um, like, sleep pattern uh, changed because I now have to wake quite early up um, because my first engagement is usually around 7 a.m. because that's the time that the East Coast uh, is yeah. awake, yeah, yeah. right, uh, in both Canada, U.S. and South America. And uh, I usually end uh, my day around 7 p.m. Uh, with the European and African uh, people. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So like every day I travel across three or more uh, continents. It, it, it's quite an interesting feeling. You wake up this part of the world uh -huh. You know, and then move slowly and right across the globe, uh, yeah. and then end up in uh, Europe. That's crazy! Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I'm, you know, I'll certainly share more updates on the article, sure. and and I'm I'm really excited for you to read it and mm -hmm. to get your feedback when it does come out. Okay, excellent. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so All much, right. Andre. Cheers. Thank you.